Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and uh, I'm going to load a little 10 millimeter up, and uh, we're going to discuss if revolvers, wheel guns, still have a place in self-defense in the modern world. Um, this is something that people have strong opinions on on both sides, uh, and let's try to actually be pragmatic about it. Rather than stick to our feelings, let's stick with just the facts, and it's pretty obvious for me here that I obviously, uh, you know, prefer semi-autos. Uh, own three Glocks that you guys have seen. Obviously, I mean, this 10 millimeter uh, is a lot of firepower for a semi-auto. And uh, obviously, this is a concealed carry holster, so it's pretty clear kind of what my favoritism is. But do revolvers still have their place? Uh, what is the reason that most people these days feel that semi-autos are superior? Capacity and rate of fire and speed of reloading. Ultimately, that's what it comes down to. The ability to put more rounds down range faster, reload faster. Just simply more firepower. And there's no argument about that. You can't argue about that fact because no matter what you do with a revolver, you're still going to have a longer trigger pull with your double action. You're still going to be limited to six or seven shots and they're still going to reload slower. The best speed loaders in the world take up more space uh, per shot and they reload slower than you can put a magazine back in. So that point's not arguable and that's a very, very valid point because ultimately in any self-defense situation, you absolutely do not know how many rounds you're going to need. And getting as many rounds downrange into your target at center mass as possible is an absolutely massive advantage. All right, you get a lot lighter, more concealable firepower, more total ammo, um, gives you some definite advantages. However, a lot of people will argue that while that's true, you never know what you're going to need. Never know how many rounds you're going to need. Most self-defense shootings uh, that are successful self-defense shootings, they're over within a handful of shots. Meaning some of them can draw on sometimes. I mean, people have eaten 20 rounds and kept going, even from proven self-defense rounds. It does happen. That's the exception, not the norm. Usually two or three shots are fired uh, in most self-defense. You the majority, over half. So the question becomes, in most situations, you probably are going to need um, more than one cylinder full in a wheel gun. And you can't bank on that. And that's ultimately the thing. You might need 50. Your auto loader might run out. You might have two extra magazines and use everything up that you have and still not be safe. So you never really know what you're going to need. But the point could be made that for most situations, you might not need a lot. And people will argue that you get more firepower per shot potential and, and even a lot of potential for more accuracy out of a big wheel gun because of the fact that you've got a heavier gun they can soak up recoil better, all right? So that means your gun's not going to have as much muzzle flip usually, even with a more powerful cartridge. Going to be dead stone reliable. I mean, it, it's very, very rare for any sort of modern wheel gun to malfunction. Auto loaders have gotten so good that it's rare also, uh, but from a reliability perspective, there's simply less things that can go wrong with a good old-fashioned wheel gun, particularly you start getting out in the elements, it starts getting really cold, all sorts of other factors at play. And I mean, truth be told, these are comparable rounds. This is a 357 Magnum, and this is a 10 millimeter. These are comparable rounds, all right? And we could argue, I mean, I've got 10 plus one in here. That's 11 rounds in a fast reload versus uh, seven. I believe this, yeah, this is a seven round revolver. All right, I have access to four more shots before I need to reload with the same amount of firepower. But with comparable ammo, which one of these kicks less? Which one's going to have less muzzle flip? The revolver. Got the potential for a little more accuracy on those follow-up shots. Sure, the trigger is a longer pull. But the gun isn't going to move as far. Now, when you're strong and you have a lot of practice, you can compensate for that a lot. And uh, that, that is definitely a factor. But here's the thing. The, if you're able to handle the 10 millimeter just fine, it's arguable that you might be able to step up to something bigger than a 357 Magnum and a heavier gun and still have the same amount of muzzle flip. I mean, push come to shove. All right. Someone who can't handle the 10 mil can probably handle a 357. Same amount of firepower per shot. The heavier gun, it soaks up recoil better. It's more annoying to carry. 
Uh, but there's an argument to be made for these big, heavy steel revolvers simply having less muzzle flip, less felt recoil for the same amount of energy. That's a valid argument. Like I said, we could argue all day, well, a stronger guy like me, 10 mils, no big deal. Well, then I could arguably step up to something a lot hotter than a 357 now, couldn't I? And that's a very valid argument. If I can handle this in a pot liver subcompact, I should be able to handle a 44 Magnum. Uh, anyone going to argue that a good hand load or a good load with a solid hunting round in it or some soft point bullet or a Hornaday XTP out of a 44 Magnum? Anyone going to argue that my 10 mil could even compete with that? It can't. It can't at all. Even softer 44 Magnum rounds still probably have 50% more energy than my 10 millimeter. I think some of the hotter ones are going to have double. You're talking about double the power, double the size of hole for every shot. Uh, again, how many guys are going to take even one hit at center mass from a 44 Magnum round, full power 44 Magnum, with any sort of hollow point? I don't even care if it's a good hollow point, any sort of hollow point from a 44 Magnum somewhere in your torso. Statistically speaking, most people are going to go down with the first hit. They're not going to stay up and fighting. Now, I'm not saying there won't be people out there who just could take five or six and keep going. It, it can happen. But statistically, your one-shot stop is pretty damn high. It's probably in the 80% range. And if that doesn't work, you can do it again. And the argument being the nice big heavy gun, less recoil, more accuracy, maybe even a little better range. And that's not to say that people don't hunt big game with the 10 mil because they do. Some people hunt big game with a 45 ACP. Not saying I would recommend that for most people, but they do. And you know, we can go up to bigger calibers. There's more powerful stuff in autoloaders. I mean, look at the 460 Roland. People use that as a very effective anti-bear round, even up in Alaska and places for grizzlies. Um, would I necessarily want my little subcompact 10 millimeter for a full-size grizzly? Probably not. Black bear, definitely. More than confident going through black bear country, cougar country with this. Grizzly bear? I don't know, man. <laughs> I'd really rather have a 44 Magnum or the 460 Roland, but we get into the same debate. The 460 is getting up there into 44 Magnum territory. You can load a 44 Magnum a bit hotter than you can, but it's still in that range. But again, you're running either a 1911 or a Glock. The recoil's a hell of a lot higher. Recoil's a hell of a lot higher. Uh, so there, there's something to be said for a revolver if you don't think you're gonna need many shots. And like I said, you can't guarantee that, that you do have a lot more firepower per shot. You're gonna have less felt recoil. And I'm not talking again about revolvers, little snub nose 38s and stuff, sorry, I'm not impressed. Uh, I don't see any advantage at all over that uh, versus an auto loader. You're better off <laughs> with a good semi-auto. That's my opinion. When we start talking about having real firepower, actually substantial power uh, from a handgun round, there's a hell of a lot more potential uh, in a revolver. There just is. Uh, and again, the reliability end of it, it's not going to wear out as fast. Definitely a factor. I mean, truth be told, does anyone really think they're going to get more practice in and more rounds through a 460 Roland out of their 1911 than they will out of a Smith & Wesson 629 44 Magnum? I think the, I think the revolver is going to last longer when you start getting up into these higher power pistol cartridges. So, like I was saying, there's definitely a massive argument to be made for simply having access to more firepower with less felt recoil out of a revolver. Uh, there is a degree of reliability difference. And like I said, modern semi-autos have become very, very reliable. But there's simply less moving parts to wear and to break and to malfunction on a revolver. All right, you're never going to get a failure to feed, a failure to eject, something like that. So it's something that you're going to have to clear. You're just not going to get that ever, ever with a revolver. Uh, now, with good ammo and a good semi auto, it's very rare also. You might go thousands of rounds without any of those problems. But if we're talking about the most reliability possible, the most firepower possible with the less recoil per shot, revolvers are going to win. Now, that's just the argument being created, and those are good arguments. 
I personally still do semi-auto. Why? Um, amount of firepower I can get for a lighter weight carrying package. It's uh, what it comes down to. Less weight, more comfortable to carry, more comfortable to wear. I can get a lot more shots because at the end of the day, um, you ultimately never know how many rounds you are going to need. You have no way to predict that. Now, we can argue that if you're connecting some of these big, powerful Magnum revolvers, you're going to need to make less hits. Uh, I think that's a fair argument. But you still miss sometimes. You even, no matter how good you are, even on a moving target who's got cover, concealment, shooting back at you, you might miss with all six or seven. And ultimately, I personally just like the fact that I have more shots, more chances to get it right, uh, and can reload a lot faster with a semi-auto. And for me, that's why that's what I use. But if someone chooses the other route and they want to use a revolver, we can argue about the antiquated technology, but I don't think it makes it a bad choice on their part. As long as they've thought it out carefully and they know why they're doing it, they know why they've made that choice. I don't think it's a bad choice, uh, particularly uh, when you start talking about more powerful ones. Like if you're strong enough to uh, handle a 44 Magnum, you don't mind the extra weight as your daily carrying piece. You handle the recoil just fine out of it. You know, I don't think it's a bad choice if that's what someone chooses to make. Um, I personally would like to have more shots. But by that same token, they've also got a gun that uh, in certain other environments is going to be a good gun out there also. Because ultimately, if you're up in grizzly bear country, I think at the end of the day, for a side for a, you know, a sidearm that you're going to carry on you uh, to deal with bears, I don't think I would be comfortable with anything less than a 44 Magnum. I might like the 10 mil, and the 10 mil might be okay for hunting bears. Might be okay for hunting grizzly with a good six inch barrel on it, a good hand load. All right, it might be a viable grizzly hunting round, but is it gonna be enough to stop an 800 pound charging grizzly bear who's coming at you? Um, I don't know if I would depend on it to do that. So there's something to be said for the versatility in certain environments of the revolver also, because at least you know that 44 Magnum with the right round, you've got a fighting chance against that charging grizzly. You still might end up as bear food. And you know up there in the frozen weather, that it's still gonna function. All right guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.